Today on Plugin Friday, we're going to look at a Cubase plugin called the Vintage Compressor. Hey, what's going on, my friends? Chris here from Mixdown Online. Now, Plugin Friday is a video series where I talk about a plugin that I like to work with or that I find very cool. And this time around, I'm going to look at a Cubase plugin. And this one is the Vintage Compressor. And talking about compression, don't forget to download my free mini guide on the fundamentals of compression. I'm going to leave the link down below. All right, so let's jump in Cubase and take a look at what the Vintage Compressor has to offer. So this is how the Vintage Compressor looks like. It's a very nice vintage type compressor, and it's a blend of an 1176 with a VCA compressor. Um, the reason why I'm saying that is, uh, first of all, the input and output uh, parameters um, are in on this uh, vintage compressor like an 1176, and this will replace the threshold. So instead of having a threshold uh, parameter, we have the input. Okay, so the input is going to act a bit like the threshold will. So the more input you add to the compressor, the more gain reduction you'll get. All right, so like we see here, um, we have a lot of input. And now the compressor is on the snare. And the more I add input, the more gain reduction I have. Now, very important to bring down the output when you add some input to the compressor or else your, your volume, your sound is going to be way too loud. Um, and something that I like to do when I'm balancing my input and output is to bypass the plugin to make sure uh, my, uh, my balance between the input and output is well done. So this way I can, uh, I can monitor what the effect of the compressor sounds like in a way more accurate way or else the loudest sound is going to sound better to, to my ears. You know, this is human nature. The louder, the better. But in reality, that's not the case. So we need to be careful with that. So balance the output with the input when you're working with this type of compressor. Next, we have fixed ratios like we have on an 1176. So two for one, four to one, eight to one, and 20 to one uh, fixed ratio parameters. Then we have the attack and release. So the attack time is going to be how fast the compressor is going to react to get to the gain reduction target or close to the gain reduction target. I think it's like two thirds of the gain reduction target if I, if I want to be very geeky about it. But point is that it's going to start compressing right away. But the attack will determine how fast you're, uh, you're going to reach that gain reduction target. But with a slower attack, it's going to take more time for the compressor to reach that gain reduction target or two thirds of that target. And that's why we have a bit more punchier sounds when we have a slow attack, you know, because the initial transients are less compressed, where a faster attack will tame down that initial transient of a signal. So let's try it out. I have that compressor on the snare. I'm overdoing it, okay, just so you can hear what a fast attack does with a lot of compression. Now, if we look at the punch parameter, this one is very unique. It's not something that I see on a lot of compressors. And this is one of the reasons why I love the vintage compressor um, within Cubase, just because of that punch mode, which is very, very nice. So what that will do, from what I understand, it's going to act a bit like um, a pre-delay will on a reverb. Okay, so by activating that punch, that will retain the initial attack phase of a signal. So I think it's going to add something like 10 milliseconds of pre-delay or so uh, to, to the compressor. So the compressor is going to start reacting um, a bit later than 
it usually does. So let's have a quick listen. Now I'm gonna again overdo the compression so we can hear the difference when I activate the punch mode. So let's bring that down a bit and try that again. Pretty cool. So I kind of like that uh, that feature um, on this plugin, the attack mode. Very useful. And then we have the release um, that goes from 10 milliseconds up to a thousand milliseconds. And the release is the complete opposite uh, of the attack. It's the time it's going to take for the compressor to restore the reduced gain of the compressed signal. Okay, so that's basically what the release time will do. Now, what makes it a bit different than the 1176 as far as the attack and release goes is uh, the values we have. Um, the attack time goes down to 0.1 milliseconds compared to an 1176, which is even faster than that. Uh, I think it starts, um, it goes down to 20 microseconds, which is the equivalent of 0.02 milliseconds and it goes and I think the slowest attack time of an 1176 is a 0.8 milliseconds so 800 microseconds which is super fast but the vintage compressor doesn't go as fast than an 1176 it's a bit more like a VCA type compressor so it makes that compressor very versatile in a way. If you like that vintage tone out of uh, a compressor, uh, you can use that compressor uh, on drums, uh, a bit like an 1176 uh, will work well on drums. And you can also use that compressor as your bus compressor if you want to. That will also work. Uh, then we have auto, which is the auto release. And this is also something that we see on VCA compressors. I have that on my Tegler Cram, uh, which can be uh, very useful on the master bus if you're not very sure uh, on the release, uh, the release setting you wanna, you wanna add, you can just use it in automatic. So that will uh, automatically set up the release time for you. And then we have the mix knob right here, which is gonna be the blend between the dry signal and the wet signals. So now let's try that mix uh, mix knob on the drum recording, on the full drum recording directly on the mix bus. Uh, but first, before we go, uh, before we do so, uh, note that you can access the vintage compressor directly from the channel strip, which makes that very, very handy. So if you click on compressor out of the channel strip in Cubase, uh, you have access to the standard compressor, the tube and the vintage compressor. And if you click on uh, edit module, that will uh, give you a full window of, uh, of that compressor, um, which is again, very fast to, uh, to access directly from that channel strip. Uh, so now we, are, uh, we have that channel strip open on the mix bus. Let's you know, just tweak that around and play with the mix knob. So this is basically parallel compression where you mix the dry signal with a fully compressed and over compressed signal, um, which gives you a bit more um, of attack out of that signal with also the tone, uh, the tone color of the compressor. I kind of like uh, working with parallel compression a lot when mixing. 
Then we have the side chain that is also available on this compressor uh, by just clicking on activate side chain. So if you want to have another signal feeding the compressor so the compressor can be triggered by that signal, you just need to activate that side chain and the side chain is going to be available as a send uh, from another channel. So for example, if I listen to this piece of music, Okay, I have that pad, let's uh, compress it. I'm just gonna overdo it again. Okay, now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna activate the side chain and uh, I have a kick drum right here. that I'm using only to trigger that compressor. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my fader way down and uh, as a send, I'm gonna select that side chain. Since the side chain has been activated on that compressor, it is gonna be available as a send uh, right here under send. Okay, so I'm just gonna click on that side chain and then I'm gonna make sure it's in pre-fader. So the signal's gonna go to that compressor before hitting the fader. So even if my fader is way down, the signal is still going to feed the compressor. And this is how it's going to sound like. So this is one thing you can do with side chaining. You can do all sorts of stuff and it's available directly on this vintage compressor plugin. So there you go, my friends. This is the vintage compressor that you can find directly in Cubase as a stuck plugin. And it's a very good plugin, I have to admit. It's not my go-to compressor, but I do use it a lot, so I don't hesitate to use it when I need to. So there you go. If you have any comments or questions, leave everything down below and don't forget to share and to like if you think the video was helpful and also if you're new here on the channel subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you don't miss anything all right my friends take care and until next time see you